Hello, everybody, it's Shogun in 2000 and Bonnie for Duty, welcoming you back to more Pokemon Heart Gold. Last time, we was given the bike to keep thanks to the bike shop advertising us to sell more or whatever. And we also got ourselves a dowsing mechanism, which helps us find a rare candy, battled our rival Noel, who is originally known as Silver, and found out there are legendary Pokemon at the bottom of the stage, as you can see right down there. This time, we are going to be tackling the gym leader of this town, but before that, we need to actually interact with these um, legendary Pokemon, but also the new encounters that you can get. And exploring um, the town here, uh, say this area, I'm going to go over them right now because they're basically surf encounters. Because uh, I said I was going to be doing that at the start of this episode. If you are surfing after you've beaten the gym leader, you will be able to use the HM Surf outside of battle. And the Pokemon that you can get in Falls, Poliwag or Poliwhirl. They look very strange to be frogs. But not, but not going to question it nonetheless. Its entire evolution line is balanced when it comes to speed. But when... Um, uh, but yeah, but when carrying the ability Swift Swim, you can double the Pokemon's base speed when it is raining inside a battle. It is balanced under its attack and defense, so it can give a lot of a lot of options of how to train it to your liking. But the hardest part has to go to the evolving Poliwhirl. If you get a Water Stone, you can evolve Poliwhirl into a Poliwrath. But you can only get it as a gift from a certain trainer you've beaten. And exchanged phone numbers for. But I don't think I've actually encountered that person yet. But then another method. Is. If you have a friend. And you trade your Poliwhirl holding a King's Rock. It will evolve into Politoed. But during that. Will. Keep it as a plain water type. As I can honestly say. Because. When you evolve into a. When you have a Poliwag, Poliwill, and Politoed, it becomes a plain water type. But if you use a Water Stone and evolve into a Poliwrath, it becomes a water fighting type. And I can honestly say this. It would make more sense if the King's Rock was to be a trade evolution item for Poliwill into Poliwrath than Politoed. Because using a Water Stone to evolve a water type into another water type, that's fine. But having a water stone give a water type the fighting type, that sounds kind of idiotic. And the reason why is because if you give it the King's Rock, it would make more sense because when a Pokemon holds a King's Rock in battle and they use a move, it has a chance of inflicting flinch on your opposition every single time you hit them. Whether or not it's a physical attacking move or a special attacking move. Okay. Um, other Pokemon that you can technically find. If you didn't catch a Wooper in Route 32, you can a ran random chance find yourself a wild Quagsire. The evolution of Wooper. It is, this is the only water type ground water ground type Pokemon that you'll be able to get in the entire game. It is pretty slow and average in everything else. But up to you to, de to declare if this is a good Pokemon or not, as I'm undecisive about it, to be honest. It does carry the main ability Water Absorb, which um, draws in water type moves that's aimed directly at him to heal his HP. But its other ability is not necessarily a good ability to have at this stage in the game. It's Damp. Damp is a move... No, 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 it's not a move, sorry. Damp is an ability that prevents moves like self-destruct and explosion from even activating. Okay, so next Pokemon. Psyduck slash 
Golduck. Many veterans would agree with one another in saying how stressful of a time they'd have training one of these Pokemon. Because it does carry Cloud9 for the ability, which is better than its other ability, which again, is Damp. As it removes any weather effect brought into battle. Compared to Damp only doing what I said moments ago. Um... Oh, okay. I actually been down until it's knocked out. I was just thinking until it's knocked itself out or something. I was just thinking, what? <laughs> so I was misreading things. Um, its highest base stat is special attack at 95, whereas everything else is just balanced, really. I can't honestly say anything else about Psyduck and Golduck, based on the fact that it's a plain water type. And at first glance, when I saw Golduck, I thought it was a water psychic type because of the fact that he could learn send a headbutt and he had that little red dot on his head. And the final Pokemon that you can encounter while surfing is Tentacool and Tentacrawl. And these are the most common Pokemon that you will encounter in most surfing areas, specifically in the sea. They can be really annoying Pokemon to encounter every playthrough of surfing on the water, but it is still a good Pokemon to use. With 120 base special defense following with 100 base speed, it would take a physical attack to knock this one out, but it is an interesting Pokemon nonetheless. Sugar Conroy actually uses Pokemon as a member of his team back in Pokemon Emerald, and I am considering doing it myself. But I might have a change of plan halfway through this LP. Because I can't just basically change my team order of Pokemon Emerald in the future. And yes, plot twist, future events, I will be doing an LP on Pokemon Emerald. Even though I don't originally own Pokemon Emerald, but I do have a friend's Pokemon Emerald where I asked his permission if he was alright with me starting a new profile of test running a new LP team for that game, and he said yes. So he's like giving the impression that I now properly own Pokemon Emerald, but really it is his game. And I can't take that away from him. Reason being is because he is really, really good at Pokemon. There are some occasions where he does lose battles, but he never lets that take him down. He learns from the errors of his ways where he learns a battle and... Well, you kind of get the rest. But going back to Tentacle and Tentacle's um, bio... It is a water poison type Pokemon with an amazing ability of clear body to prevent stat lowering to be given to this Pokemon. Another main ability it can carry is Liquid Ooze, where if a Pokemon hits him with moves like Absorb, Mega Drain, etc., the Pokemon, instead of healing its HP, depending on how much damage you've done to Tentacool, will actually lose HP. Which actually sounds really interesting. And that's all the encounters you can get while surfing. And now, for the one encounter that you can get in Equ Equitech Burnt Tower. And we actually met this Pokemon in a battle against that fire breather that is above us. Coughing. It is a defensive wall with only one weakness. Being psychic. Because it carries the main ability known as Levitate, which makes it immune to ground types. As it is a plain poison type Pokemon, to say the least, there are many uses for this Pokemon, but we'd be here all day if I started going over it all. But the key factors I will mention, he can learn Toxic by leveling up, which is actually a really good move to teach the majority of poison types. It makes... It makes the move 100% accurate if a poison type Pokemon is to learn it, but it's 90% accuracy regardless. It is a, st is a move that gives badly 
poison status condition to all opponents apart from poison types or steel types. What it does is, on the first turn, when the Pokemon's badly poisoned, they take a 16th health of damage at the end of every turn, then an 8th, then a 6th, then a quarter, and so on. It gets worse and worse and worse at the end of every single turn, the longer the Pokemon has remained poisoned with that status. And that's all I can say about this Pokemon, really. Did you see it? Suicune raced by, raced by like a blur right in front of my eyes. I have been chasing Suicune for almost ten years. But I have never been this close. I'm all choked up. By the way, it was clear to me that Suicune took notice of your presence. Equitech's legendary Pokemon are said to come to people only when they recognize their talents. Perhaps I should be more aggressive towards Suicune. Anyway, Ash, we will meet again. What it says there is completely false. The fact that it's saying to be more aggressive to Suicune, yeah, if you do that, that makes Suicune less likely to want to be with you. After doing that, this guy will actually show up here. In the distant past, when this tower burnt in, in a fire, three nameless Pokemon perished, it, perished in it. Then a rainbow hilled Pokemon descended from the sky and somehow brought them back. The people were afraid of power, such as the rainbow hilled Pokemon has shown. They tried to control it by force. The nameless Pokemon made no attempt to fight back. Instead, their great sorrow compelled them to leave. This legendary has been passed down by the Equitech Gym Leader. But me? I was a trainer way back when. <laughs> Alright, never mind. Uh, wait, hold on, I'm gonna just realise something. Yeah, okay. I thought you had to talk to um, the Gym Leader <laughs> after you've encountered uh, the legendary dogs. But no, he's gone. He's gone. So we're free to move on towards the um, gym now. And of course, before I blinking well forget, I am going to heal up my Pokemon because Lord knows I need to do that. Now, this actually will present a problem to me, knowing the fact that, um, obviously, we're going to be using four Pokemon. The Pokemon I am choosing to use are Quilava, Dratini, Ghastly, and Heracross. Why am I not using my main party member with Pinsir? You will find out very, very shortly. Into the gym we go. And you're probably thinking, this color symbol, every time you see a gym, you see a color symbol, you can easily tell exactly what the gym is going to be. When I first entered this gym, I thought it was a poison type gym because the color scheme on the top is purple. But I was wrong. Yo, champ in the making, the trainers here use ghost type Pokemon as well. A ghost is like a shade or a phantom. It won't do a good use to physical strength alone. Yep. This is a ghost type gym. That is why I did not want to use Pinsir. Because Pinsir's moves currently are Focus Energy, Bide, Brick Break and Seismic Toss. Two normal moves, two fighting type moves. And as you can tell with ghost type Pokemon... Normal type moves and fighting type moves have no effect on ghost type Pokemon. And 
and as you can pretty much tell, uh, the only ghost type Pokemon that was introduced uh, back in Generation 1, or in the Kanto region full stop, was the Ghastly family. And you're probably thinking, have we been given new ghost type Pokemon in Generation 2? The answer is no. We have not. In fact, if I bring up... The Gen 2 Pokedex... I'm not going to say the Pokemon listed in the Pokedex. Um, I'm just... Going to load up the wrong web page. Here we go. So I'm actually looking up right now of all Pokemon to see if I can find any ghost type Pokemon. And the answer is yes, there is no ghost type Pokemon. Which means you can easily tell exactly who the gym leader is going to be using. And I can honestly say it is a missed opportunity. Because obviously this is a Gen 4 game. You probably would have thought, is he going to be using ghost type Pokemon that you can find in the futuristic gens of Generation 3 and Generation 4? You probably might be thinking, yes. But, I have to remind you, this is a remake of the original Gen 2 game Gold, Silver and Crystal. Meaning, they have to focus on the exact same scenario of when you're playing Gold, Silver and Crystal, where you're battling the gym leaders using the exact same Pokemon then as they will be doing now. If you get what I'm referring to. So, yeah, once you've beaten these trainers, they're going to turn the lights off on their candles. So it's basically, see the path when you get ambushed, and then memorization of where you need to walk. If you fall off, you'll be reset back to the very beginning of the gym, but the lights will be turned back on, fortunately. And they won't actually rebattle you. So obviously we're not going to have enough time to reach the gym leader this episode. So what I'm going to do is... Off camera... I am going to battle the rest of these trainers. And then next episode... We will officially battle the gym leader. Okay? So next time on Pokemon Heart Gold... Even though I did say at the end of the last episode we will battle the gym leader, I kind of took a whole step too far with the whole bio business because I spent about like five or eight minutes trying to go over the bio. And I, kind of, I was kind of like, okay, I, sp I stopped what I was doing with the game and you're going to get a twist. At well, that's not being insulted to injury. <laughs> yeah, um, apparently we stopped using Heracross as being a member for our LP team when we got Pinsir one level before we got a chance to learn a really good move. Yeah, that's kind of awkward. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. The reason why I chose to go for Pinsir over Heracross was mainly because of the fact that the only stab move that Heracross was able to learn was not really helpful at all. And it actually learns the one move I actually wanted to teach Heracross immediately after changing him. <laughs> yeah, kind of awkward that. So yeah, next time on Pokemon Hot Gold for real, 
we will be tackling the gym leader. See you guys then.